Hello. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. This is the global community for adults who are healing CPTSD. My name is Athena and we've been all coming together here weekly to check in with one another for about 10 years now. And if you are an adult and you're living with CPTSD symptoms, what you believe to be CPTSD symptoms as a result of childhood trauma, and you are healing childhood trauma as an adult, then you're in the right place. We're so glad you're here. We're very glad you're here. So again, my name is Athena. This channel is sponsored by the Foundation for Post-Traumatic Healing and Complex Trauma Research, also known as cptsdfoundation.org. And there's a link to join us off of social media in the comment section and in the description section below this video. We meet up here every week, Monday, 7 p.m. Eastern, and we focus on nervous system regulation while being in connection with others. We focus on co-regulation. Over the years, this channel has sort of evolved. We did a lot of open Q&A, um, different topical videos, and over the past year or two, we've been doing a lot of uh, breath work, meditations, affirmations, compassionate healing strategies. And again, we meet up here once a week. We check in with one another and we share what's been working for us in our healing journey and what hasn't been working for us in our healing journey. So if this is your first time here, thank you for clicking on this video. We warmly welcome you to our community. And if this isn't your first time here, welcome back so grateful that you've chosen to be here today. I'm just going to pause and just warmly welcome a couple of you who are here for our time together. A warm welcome to you, Jeffrey Sherman, and a warm welcome to you, Nadine. How are you, Nadine Marie? So good to see you. It has been a while. Yes, much love to you as well. I'm waving back to you, Jeffrey, and smiling. Thank you for all of the emojis. Hello to you, Joe. Hi. Hello, Ninja Taco. So great to see you, recovery buddy. Really great to be here. So as always, we do have our uh, meditation written by Morgan Harper Nichols. Her artwork is what you see up on the screen. We also have our Compassionate Healing Strategy written by Dr. Ariel Schwartz. And we have our Loving the Self Affirmation written by Lisa A. Romano. And we will start all of that with a quote by Young Pueblo from his most recent book titled The Way Forward and this is his quote this can be found on page 80 of the book titled The Way Forward they asked her how do you get through tough moments? And she answered, Do not trust the way you see yourself when your mind is turbulent. And remember that even pain is temporary. Honor your boundaries. Treat yourself gently. Let go of perfection and feel your emotions without letting them control you. You have enough experience to face the storm 
and evolve from it. End quote. And that is titled Resilience. Hello, warm welcome to you, Leah. And hello, hello back to you, Lisa. Great to see everyone. So I'm loving Young Puebla's most recent book. It's really, really good. And it's been very helpful for my own healing journey. Remember, I'm healing right alongside you. It's been quite a long journey, but I'm really grateful to be here. Let's start our time together after that beautiful quote with a nice big stretch and I want to invite you to get very, very, very comfortable. You can leave your eyes open or if it feels safe, close down the eyes. I'm just doing a couple of nice big stretches. And we'll do a little breath work together. As always, I'll describe my setup for you here. I'm sitting in my most favorite workspace. I'm sitting up. You can feel free to lie down or sit up. Or if you're standing or walking, whatever is most comfortable for you. I just happen to be sitting and my spine is tall and straight. My heart space is open and my belly is soft. We're going to do some box breathing together. We'll breathe together. We'll breathe in four counts. We'll pause for four counts. We'll breathe out four counts. And we'll pause four counts. And we'll do that four times. And I will count us in on our first breath together and on our fourth breath together. And on our second and third breath, we'll be on our own. Are you ready? Let us begin. Breathe in in three, two, one. Breathe in three, two, one, pause, three, two, one, breathe out, three, two, one, pause, three, two, one, on your own now. Again. Last time together now. Inhale, three, two, one. Pause, three, two, one. Exhale, three, two, one. Pause, three, two, one. 
three, two, one. Well done. Beautiful, beautiful breathing. How do you feel? I got about four yawns that time, which is really, feels really, really good in the body. Activating our parasympathetic, our rest and digest. I feel very grateful. Warm welcome to you, Emily. So glad to see you. Glad you're here. So we have our meditation by Morgan Harper Nichols. Her artwork is what you see up on the screen. Our theme this week. I forgot to mention to you what our theme this week is. Warm welcome, Elise. Warm welcome to you, John Harvey. So good to see you. So good to see everyone. So I'm going to check in with you. This is our theme this week. What does welcoming presence look like to you? Not presence like uh, things that people give you and you unwrap the presents under the tree or on a special day someone gives you a present and you rip off the paper and open the box. What I mean by presence is when you are able to feel the present moment in such a way that feels meaningful. Right? Presence. Being fully present. Being fully present in the moment. The Oxford Dictionary describes presence as a noun. And it is the state or fact of existing or occurring or being present in a place. So what does welcoming presence look like for you? I'm going to check in with each of you. So how about for you, Jeffrey Sherman? What does welcoming presence look like for you? How about for you, Nadine, and Joe, and Chitako, Leah, Lisa, Emily, Elise, John Harvey? What does welcoming presence look like? says, for me, being present is definitely laughing and feeling joy. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing, Elise. Ninja Taco says, welcoming presence for me equals a cozy bed with stuffed animals and creative stuff ready to go. I love that. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. John Harvey says, I hope 
everyone is doing well tonight. Thank you, John Harvey. I'm grateful for your presence. I hope you're doing well also. For me, I think welcoming presence, I think it looks like feeling comfortable in my own body to the degree that I can be content by myself and comfortable by myself in my apartment where I feel safe and I can simply just be with no distractions if I'd like. For instance, I've been taking this class on inner child work, healing those um, injured younger parts of ourself from childhood. And one of the ways that we are practicing this healing work is to become attuned with those younger aspects of self. So what that looks like for me is being fully present for my younger self. And specifically what that looks like for me is sitting in my apartment with no distractions. No devices, no TV, nothing. Just the beautiful silence. I can hear the birds chirping outside. And I am present, fully present with me. And some of the prompts that are offered to us on this inner child work class is for us to check in with our younger aspects of self and to ask how are you feeling? What would you like for me to do for you right now? What do you need right now? What are you trying to tell me? I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. It's just the two of us. And we are safe. No one's going to hurt us. It's just us. And I'm not going anywhere. I'll always be here. Yeah. It's been very interesting to be fully present in those ways. Lisa says, being present for me is interacting with my children and friends, being content and at peace. Yeah, I love that. Thank you to each of you who are sharing. Thank you, Ninja Taco. Thank you, Lisa. Ellie, Ellie Say says that is beautiful. It is beautiful. Lisa says I'll be starting a course tomorrow on healing childhood trauma. Jeffrey Sherman says yes. Feeling safe and comfortable in the current situation, that's when I can welcome presence. I can express without fear and stay in my parasympathetic nervous system. That's beautiful. Thank you all so much for sharing. Leah says, welcoming presence. 
presence is when everyone is at home and at peace. It feels safe to do anything I want without worrying how it is going to cause an unexpected response in surroundings. Freedom to express myself, be myself, and love myself. That is so beautiful. My hand is on my heart. I love that for you. Each of you, thank you for sharing so much. Thank you for sharing what welcoming presence looks like for you. Jeffrey Sherman says, I hope that goes well, Lisa. And yes, Leah. Yeah. I'm sending hugs to each of you. Now I will read for us our meditation written by Morgan Harper Nichols. And our theme is welcoming presence. Morgan says, perhaps here in the waiting, there's more happening than what you might be able to perceive. Maybe far beyond the busyness and noise of daily life, there is still a present moment that is rich with meaning and beauty worth drawing nearer to. Now this does not mean that everything happening in the present moment is pretty or lovely because that is far from the case. Being present to this very moment doesn't mean that we have to make sense of everything that is happening right now. Of course, there are very real things happening in the present that must be addressed. And at the same time, as you process all of that and navigate through the specific things that you are able to do with the capacity and resources you have, may you also know that you are allowed to take a moment to breathe wherever and however you can. I just want to invite you to pause and take a deep breath with me. Morgan continues and she says, because while you are waiting for things to fall into place, there is so much happening in the present moment and you are allowed to take even just a few moments to smoke it, to focus on the smallest thing as a reminder of how you might be able to move through this space as you wait for what's ahead. Perhaps the way the light filters through the blinds across the room is more than just something that is happening all on its own and not connected to you in any way. Perhaps it is also a reminder of the ways in which sunlight is finding you 
even in spaces that are somewhat closed off. And maybe it could be a reminder of the grace that is moving toward you in this very space. And perhaps a crack in the tile on the floor or that small crack in the sidewalk outside. What if they are more than just wear and tear of a constructed space, but rather reminders that there is movement happening in this space. The space has not been stagnant. Every footprint and handprint has an effect. And this matters when it comes to taking care of the earth and it also matters when it comes to the ways you too are not stagnant and your presence your presence is valid and has significance even if all you are doing is just breathing making small fingerprints or imprints in some way. Perhaps the way it feels to lie down after a long day or to go and do something enjoyable after doing nothing at all. Whatever small shift serves as an action to help you get to a place of rest, of comfort, of joy, or just taking a short break without having to worry. Perhaps that event is not some isolated thing, but a small hint that maybe, just maybe, there are other opportunities out there like this too. And when you are waiting, perhaps you are not just waiting in this present moment. That can be, the present moment can be intense in a billion different ways. But what if you are also learning how to be in a space where you are allowed to slow down and observe the most seemingly insignificant thing and what it might reveal to you. Not every moment or everything you look at will be this way. And instead, this process of learning how to be here is learning how to practice stillness and not putting pressure on yourself to do it the right way but instead to focus on how you can welcome grace in the present moment with presence, no matter what you are waiting for. I love Morgan. What a gift. How did that feel for you? How did that land for you? My deepest hope is that you are able to welcome presence into your life and just be here for this present moment. Even if it's just to take a deep breath. Thank you all for sharing what presence is for you, what welcoming presence looks like for you. A warm welcome to you, Mandy J and Lil J. It's okay, you're never late. You're never late, you're right on time. Please let us know what does welcoming presence look like for you? 
that's our theme this week. So we're going to shift gears just a little bit. And while we're talking about the present moment and welcoming presence, what we're going to do, Dr. Ariel, her compassionate healing strategy this week is all about self-awareness. And if we're unable to be present in the moment, we may not be able to participate in self-awareness. We may not be able to be there for ourselves, to be present for ourselves in the ways that we deserve. Oh, thank you all for my hugs. Mm, thank you. Yes, I agree with Lisa. Thank you all for being here. Oh, Elise says, you hold a light within the darkness. Yes, you do. Thank you for being a light, each of you. So let's glance at what Dr. Ariel is inviting us to, to look at. Let's, let's glance. This is just an invitation. It's never a mandate. You're welcome to just continue. Remain in your very comfortable eyes open, lying down, sitting up, whatever's most comfortable for you. She's helping us with self-awareness this week in this present moment. And she's going to walk us through a compassionate healing strategy on becoming aware of what may trigger us into an emotional flashback. And then she's going to help us sit with what is and be able, with self-awareness, to have greater access to healing. Help us identify any types of uh, invasive and intrusive symptoms. Her invitation to us this week is a moment of reflection, welcoming presence, being in the present moment. She says, Developing self-awareness of our triggers is one of the most important strategies for managing our invasive and intrusive symptoms of CPTSD. If you know you may get triggered into a flashback, then you're more likely to immediately use our strategies to calm ourselves and to feel safe. Self-awareness of our triggers can help us to predict when we might face potentially upsetting events, which may allow us to prepare. So the first step in this healing practice is for us to become aware of what may trigger us. So let us take some time. I'll go through a list of some potentially triggering events and once we identify these potentially triggering events we're going to take a few moments and we're going to reflect upon the emotions that arise in the body in the present moment a welcoming presence okay So some of the common people, places, and things that may be a trigger for us as 
someone who is living with CPTSD symptoms, think about if you've ever been in contact with historically dysfunctional or neglectful or even abusive family members. Now this includes phone calls and visits. A warm welcome to you, Sheila. We're doing our compassionate healing strategy with Dr. Ariel Schwartz. So let's think about that. If we're here and we're welcoming presence, let's think back and realize that moving forward, if we look back and remember a time when someone contacted us on the phone or stopped by or we were attending an event with historically and predictably dysfunctional, neglectful, or toxic, or even abusive family members. That's one of the things that could cause us some emotional dysregulation. Or returning to your childhood home. Or recent events that remind you of your childhood trauma. For example, like a scene in a movie or an article in the news or a post or a TikTok video, something on social media. Or how about when we experience conflict with a loved one, like a spouse or a partner or even a child or a friend or a colleague? How about when we feel alone or abandoned or rejected? Sometimes we feel like this and it can cause us to feel triggered when we feel out of control. Out of control. Or what about when we experience a sensory reminder? Such as a smell or a sound or a taste. And lastly, this is a big one for many of us. What about when we make mistakes? Simple mistakes that anyone can make, like getting a parking ticket or dropping a dish and breaking it. It's an accident, right? But these things for complex trauma survivors, all the things we mentioned, while on the surface they seem simply benign, to us, it could be a trigger into a flashback. So once we've identified any of uh, the things I mentioned or something that you might have on your list, maybe you have something different on your list, let's take a few minutes and reflect upon how we're feeling in the body. Maybe place one hand on your heart and one hand on your belly. Just take a couple of deep breaths. Do we feel afraid? Do we feel angry or sad? Do we feel helpless? Do we become excessively self-critical? Let us notice the feeling that we have in the body with each thought. Do we feel anxious? Do we feel jumpy? Remember, it's just the present moment. How are we feeling in the body? Is our heart racing? Or, in contrast, do we feel frozen, like we can't move? Do we feel collapsed or fatigued? Let us see if we can explore these experiences with self-compassion. Let's take a moment 
Let us consider, do any of these emotions and sensations feel familiar? Can we recall any times during childhood when we had similar feelings? If we discover anything that feels familiar, these memories may serve as clues to the unfinished business we may have with our childhood. There may be some that you can think of that are not on the list. We're only looking at self-awareness. We're only becoming aware of them. It's just an invitation. Yes, John Harvey says, I feel triggered when I feel out of place. Me too, John Harvey. Did you know that that's one of our three necessities as human beings? Feeling like we belong? Did you know that? Feeling safe, feeling included, and feeling deeply worthy. Those are three necessities that every human has. I'm so sorry, John Harvey. We deserved more than that. John Harvey said, My childhood, I felt out of place, not being anywhere lost in a world that isn't mine. Mm. Thank you so much for sharing, John Harvey. Mandy J and Lil J said, same. Yeah. I felt out of place also. I also had feelings of being lost. Thank you for sharing so vulnerably. That's excellent self-awareness, John Harvey. Yes, Jeffrey Sherman says, same. Yes, same. Yeah. So Dr. Ariel says, once we have gained some self-awareness, of any potential triggering events, we might choose to share this information with our trauma therapist or with a safe enough loved one or your safe community, the way you're sharing here with me. And the reason we share is so that we may experience what it feels like to be compassionately witnessed and fully acknowledged for our lived experience and to have our feelings, all of them, validated. And here in this community, many of us, we experience such a deep felt sense of empathy because so many of us have a similar lived experience. So with my hand on my heart, I see you, I hear you, I honor you, I honor your journey. I honor your process. Mm. Ninja Taco says, I had days where the abuse would come up and I felt very alien. Yes. One of my girlfriends and I talk about how we feel like aliens. That is so common. I see you, Ninja Taco. I'm sorry you felt that way. If you're an alien, I'm an alien. We're both aliens. <laughs> Leah says, when I close my eyes and go inside, I feel disconnected and it feels scary. Oh, I'm so sorry, Leah. 
I'm grateful that you are connected with us here. It's wonderful to have you here in our presence. Yeah, John Harvey says, Ninja Taco, feeling alien is very common, or feeling like a zombie. Yeah, very, very common. Yeah. And Leah, Lisa says, I feel the same, Leah. Oh, Leah says, thank you. Hello, Mary. We warmly welcome you. Mary says, ah, so glad to have just joined in. Thank you. I needed to hear that just now. You're very welcome. We're so grateful you're here in our presence. Our theme this week is welcoming presence. Mandy J and Little J say, I was adopted and I've always felt adrift, lost, like a wanderer. I think there's an almost innate feeling of abandonment involved. That is so very introspective. Your level of self-awareness is, is truly remarkable. Of course that's how you feel. How could you feel any other way, Mandy J and Little J? We are so glad that you are here with us. And for what it's worth, Mandy J and Little J, I was not adopted but I was told from a very young age that I wasn't wanted, that my, um, my family wished that I wasn't born. They would tell me this over and over. I didn't understand. I didn't know what that meant. Um, they would scream at me and, and they hated me. <laughs> I asked my, uh, my second grade teacher, maybe it was my third grade teacher, what is abortion? I didn't understand what abortion was. And the whole, the teachers all just went silent. And then the principal came and I got in trouble. I didn't even know what the word was. Everybody was learning how to use toothbrushes. Um, but I was very unwanted, very unloved. I wasn't supposed to exist. So I too felt very abandoned and very unloved and very alien and other than, less than, different than, separate than. You are not alone. Mm. Marie says, hearing the process out loud is helping me normalize when my triggers happen and letting it go like a little balloon. Oh, that's so beautiful, Marie. Welcome. Thank you. Jeffrey Sherwin says, I'm okay being an alien, except I hate feeling so alone when I can't speak of certain parts of my life with most people because they respond adversely or just don't understand. I hate that isolation. <sighs> of course you do, Jeffrey Sherman. Of course you hate that isolation. I hate that for you. I'm so sorry you're feeling so alone. Please know that when you're here with us, you are not alone. I wish, 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 wish a million wishes that you could speak of all parts of your life with those with whom you feel close to and that you wouldn't feel isolated. I wish they would not respond adversely. I wish they would witness you compassionately and fully acknowledge and receive you for what it's taken to, for you to get to the place where you're at right now and to validate your feelings and to show you empathy. Yeah, Jeffrey Sherman says, I don't necessarily want to fit in, but I yearn to be accepted for who I am. And that is why you are here with us. Yeah, Leah says, you are wanted and loved now. Oh, Lisa says, 
I felt unloved and unwanted. My childhood was full of abuse and neglect. I'm so sorry, Lisa. I'd like to echo what Leah says. You are wanted and loved now, right here, right now. John Harvey says, Jeffrey Sherman, I know that feeling and have been there too. Family sometimes doesn't understand. That is why we got family. <laughs> you all are my family. Yes, you are my friendly family of choice. Oh, I'm so glad, Jeffrey Sherman. Yes, this is a validating, accepting, and warm place for you all. I love the family. I love you too. Yeah. Elise says, It's hard to relate to people my age, especially when it comes to what people call banter. Everyone is harsh and mean. Yeah, I hear you, Elise. I don't spend time with those people anymore. Nope. I, uh, I forget who said it first, but I no longer go where I am tolerated. I only go where I am celebrated. <laughs> and I love that. And I'm, I wish that for each and every one of you as well. So again, Dr. Ariel, her invitation to us is to simply be with what it is we are feeling and be able to identify what the feelings may be. That's all. Okay? Because if we can identify some things that we're feeling, then we can speak to our helping professionals and they can help us. So we'll end our time together with our loving the self affirmation. Written by Lisa A. Romano. And in our theme, within our theme of welcoming presence, Lisa says, I know that in the past, I have made relationships with others more important than my relationship with my own self. And today, today I will remember to make me my priority. I will mother and nurture my own self today with loving and positive self-talk. I am good. I am enough. I am capable. I am courageous and I am divine. Today, I love and accept myself unconditionally. <sighs> Thank you all so much for your presence this week. I will be here with you next Monday and every Monday, 7 p.m. Eastern. And if I don't see you over in our daily recovery support calls offered through the foundation through for post-traumatic healing and complex trauma research, then I will be here with you next week. In the meantime, please be extra kind and patient and gentle with yourself because you're worth it. And I'll see you soon. Good night, everyone.